everyone, Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. I'm gonna do a five minute video. So we just talked about how easy it is to get into business. Now, whether that's starting it from scratch or whether you're gonna be buying an existing business, which we can do either as an asset purchase or a stock purchase. The stock purchase, you're buying the actual entity. The asset purchase, we usually have to set up our own entity and then buy the assets of an existing business, pros and cons to each of those. Or maybe we are getting into franchising and we're gonna be signing a franchise agreement and we'll be buying a franchise from a franchising company. There's a lot of different options for how to get into business. But what I really wanna talk about in this video is how difficult it is. So this is the mindset that I need to impress upon my clients. You might be very successful at doing business in your country and, and, and I'm not questioning you. You might, it, it might be a family business, might've been one you started or one you inherited. And there are things in your country that you know about, you know about the legal system, you know about the taxes, you know about regulations, you know about labor and employment. You just know all these things because you're comfortable with them. Maybe it, you know, it's a foreign language, but you speak it natively. So now you come to the United States where as much as we can speak Spanish here in South Florida, the laws are all written in English. So you're at a, first of all, a great disadvantage if you don't speak the language. Um, I'm not saying it's insurmountable. I'm just saying I want you to recognize it. Then, and, and by the way, just the, also all your vendors, all your employees, if you can't speak to them at all, that's gonna be very difficult. So then we have to remember that as a business owner, just, just think about the different relationships. So the relationship that you might have with the other owners, right? That's at the level of the ownership of either an LLC or a corporation. So we're gonna be looking at corporation law or LLC law. Then you're gonna maybe have a place of business. Now you could be all online, it could be virtual, but let's just imagine that you're gonna have a, an old fashioned brick and mortar, whether that's a restaurant or a manufacturing plant or a store at the mall, you're gonna have probably a landlord. If you don't have a landlord, then you're gonna be buying the land or buying the building. Right, so then you're gonna have people working for you. So those people could either be contractors or employees. That's a big distinction, a big, relatively complicated legal distinction about who you're allowed to treat as independent contractors, which most small businesses try to get away with at some point because you know, I will tell you, it's about 8% cheaper to have an independent contractor as a business owner than to have an employee. So if you decide to have employees, now you gotta make sure you're following labor laws. Now here's the cheat code you actually don't get to pick. The job description and the duties of the person determines whether they're an employee or an independent contractor. So if you misclassify that, you can get in trouble with the Department of Labor or with the IRS or with the courts or with the employees or with the labor attorneys, etc. cetera. Um, then you're going to have vendors, right? So we're gonna be reviewing contracts. These are gonna be contracts where we are buying goods and services from suppliers and vendors. Now, typically that's gonna be their contract. So they're gonna come and say, oh, you wanna buy my stuff? Here, read this and sign at the bottom. So you gotta make sure that you understand contract law, right? And, and maybe there's specific issues in your industry, right? There could be licenses and rules and regulations that are specific to the type of business that you're doing. And those could be state, federal, or local, right? So the, 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 there is a lot that we need to know right there. Then every business should have insurance and there's lots of different types of insurance and some are very expensive and some are very affordable and some are required by law like workers comp insurance in Florida. If you have a construction business, you have at least one employee, you have to have workers comp insurance. If you have a regular office like we do, it's after five employees. So, so insurance and, and the way to read an insurance contract and the way, you know, I had a client once who got sued for a labor uh, cause of action and they didn't even know that they had an, employ uh, an insurance policy that covered employment and labor issues. And it was way too late after the fact, I asked them, I'm like, hey, do you guys have insurance for this? And they're like, no, we don't have insurance for that. I said, call your insurance guy. They called the insurance guy. The insurance guy's like, yeah, you're covered. Except we filed our claim so late that the claim was denied by the insurance company. So you gotta know how to navigate that, that system, right? And then last but not least on my little organizational chart is we've got our customers. Right? So whether we're selling goods or services, are we making them sign a contract? And, and if we are, then what language is in that contract to protect our business and to help build a good relationship? So last you know, thing I will put out there is the American mentality. It is the win-win, which means that if you come from a country where you don't believe in the win-win, so for example, there's a lot of people that come from countries that have the lose-lose. The lose-lose means that both people have to be upset in order for it to be a good deal. Whereas in America, we want both people to be happy to have a good deal. Or there's other countries where you feel like if the other guy's happy, then he must be taking advantage of you. So the goal is to actually make sure that the other guy's not happy no matter what. That is not how we do business in the United States. 
And so people will tell you we're a very litigious society, that everyone goes to court, that everyone's suing each other. That's not the point. The point is the mindset and the competitive nature and hopefully getting the good team of advisors around you. So real quick before I sign off, accountant, lawyer, insurance agent, banker, and financial advisor. I tell every entrepreneur and business owner, you need this team. And if you're new to this country and you're maybe even new to the language, you need help even more. So please, I'm here to answer all your questions. Give me a call. Thanks.